Hi guys, welcome to the Martha Munizzi podcast. And I'm just going to get right to it again because I have somebody that is a special guest that I cannot wait for you to meet. She is, um, she's not a friend, she's family. And she is like a sister to me for over 20 years. I'm not, don't, don't do the math, yeah. but um, <laughs> she really, really is. And we do life together. We are, you know, connected together through so many different uh, just life experiences. Yeah. And I just want you to welcome the one and the only LaRue Howard. Yay. And she's my guest today. And we're going to talk. We are like sisters, y'all. And we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. Yeah, because I've been here for like an hour and we've been talking. About we could have just been rolling already. the cameras. I know that was dumb. Um, but it's, no, it's true. We were like, okay, what are we going to talk about? Everything. We have talked about everything. We could talk. We could probably do like a whole month of these yeah. and still have more to talk about because we have a lot in common. We kind of grew up together. We did. Yeah. And I mean, do you know that I knew you before? I think when I met you, you were pregnant with Nicole. I think I was. You hadn't had Nathan yet. I had not had Nathan. Yeah. So that's... I've, and yeah, No, I know. I mean, our babies were little together, yeah. and we yeah. grew up together. Yeah. And it's just been an incredible journey. And I've, I love her more every year. I appreciate her more <laughs> every year. And even when there's seasons that go by that we're not able to really connect, yeah. we're still connected. Yeah. And it's when like we get that together... best friend that you, you know, you're best friends with, and you don't have to talk to them all the time. But absolutely. when you do, it's like you just pick right back up right yeah, where yeah. you left off. Exactly. Because we, we really are. We're very kindred spirit. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's helped me so many times over the years, even with my voice, when I've struggled with my voice. So we get a lot to talk about. And this podcast is going to be about a lot of different things. We're going to be talking, you know, if you've been watching it, we've talked about music. Yeah. We talk about ministry, women in ministry. We're going to be talking about health and wellness and um, stay around for the next couple of weeks because we are going to, I'm going to keep her on for another week after today. We're going to be talking about vocal health yeah. and overall health and wellness and anxiety, how it's yeah. all connected. Every time I talk to LaRue, she tells me something I did not know that <laughs> blows my mind. Like, really? Wow. So she's going to do that for you today. And I can't wait because she is a powerhouse. If you don't know LaRue, She's a powerhouse. I rarely run into people that I go, yeah, you know LaRue? Oh, I know who LaRue is. <laughs> she's made a name for herself, and she's done it through serving mm -hmm. in her local church. She's done it by being faithful with whatever God puts on, on, on her plate. She's a great songwriter. She's got music out of, on her own. And I think you have, you've have you got a Dove Award that yeah. you want a Dove. That's yeah. amazing. I was at the Doves when you were walking down. I'm like, <laughs> that's my girl. She's winning a Dove. It's awesome. And she's got like over 10 million views yeah, on YouTube. On that great I Am video. So many Gosh. people have seen that from all over the world. I mean, it's just been amazing to receive inboxes and messages yeah. from people from literally all over the world that are, have been blessed by the recording of that great I Am video. It has just changed so many lives. God, is, God has been so faithful. You haven't heard yeah. the song Great I Am until you've heard her sing the song Great I Am. So <laughs> Google it on YouTube. I'm telling you, wait till after this is over and then go watch it. But she is a powerhouse. And I, I love her because she always brings wisdom. You always just bring a beautiful smile. First of all, you're gorgeous. <laughs> and, but she always brings a beautiful smile and just warmth when you come in the room and just love. And I love that about you. Uh -huh. And, you know, we met in a local church and can I just tell you, we're going to, we're going to talk about something that's very important. Kind of seems to be the theme of this month because yeah. I had Deidre Greathouse on last week and we talked about serving in your local church and we talked about being loyal. And I was like, you know what? I want to ask LaRue well, how she feels about this same well, topic. You know what? Okay. Well, let me just say this because you've said so many wonderful things about me and I appreciate that so much, but I would not be the worship leader that I am today if it weren't for this woman right here. When I first joined a, a church that we were both serving in here in Orlando, I, I was new to Orlando and walked into this ministry and saw Martha and Dan and they were leading worship. And from there, I just knew I had to be a part of the, of the ministry just as a whole. But then when I joined the praise team and got to be a part of the ministry, the music ministry there, Martha would pull things out of me after the story that I'm going to tell you in just a second. <laughs> it's a great there story. Is a story. <laughs> <laughs> I love but, this story. But, but she saw something in me that was just, that I didn't even know that I possessed. Mm -hmm. So I have to tell you thank you for, for, for recognizing that and for pushing me because I wouldn't be 
who I am today if it weren't for you. Oh, well, so you I had it, girl. You, you so had much. it. You had it. It was all there. You so there's it. so there is a story though. Tell it. You have to tell the story. It's a I great have to story. Tell the story. So I was in the choir and being being in the choir, I was a music I was a music educator. I was teaching music in the elementary school systems and you know ha- having a degree in music and and you know being classically trained and all of that good stuff. You have a relative amount of musical knowledge and things yeah. of that nature. However, <laughs> sometimes you can have too, you can have so much knowledge that you, you know, you, you start, we, we say you start smelling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I started smelling myself. Uh-oh. I did. Um, and so, but there was a time when I, I would literally get so frustrated because there were things that I would say, oh man, you know, Martha would be directing the choir and I would say, man, I could, I could do, I could do that. Who does that say? Who does that sound like? <laughs> Sounds like someone that we are familiar <laughs> with his story, right? <laughs> so long story short, I left the ministry for about three months, and the Lord really started dealing with me and really convicted me and humbled me and said, you bet, you need to go back and apologize and repent and ask Martha, Martha wow. to forgive you just for the thoughts that you had. Because I never said anything to her no. openly or anything like that, but just for those thoughts that I had about myself. And so the Sunday, I'll never forget this, the Sunday that I came back and I went to speak to Martha after service, yeah. and I said to her, you know, I, I, I have to apologize because I started thinking about myself more highly than I should have. And it caused me to leave. And so I need to apologize because I want to come back and continue to serve. I was just in the choir. I wasn't on a praise team or anything like that. And Martha said, you (laughs) almost missed your window of opportunity because our pastor was asking for you today to step out and sing. Yes. That Sunday, y'all, if I had not come back, right. if I hadn't listened and was obedient to the voice of the Lord, I, I would have missed an entire yeah. opportunity season in my life that God had prepared for me that I even had. I didn't have any inkling of an idea. Yeah. And so I just, you know, That's am- I'm just so thankful yeah. for you and so thankful to God for not letting me stay in my funk, you know. Yeah. For not leaving me in my in my mess. Yeah. If you have a relationship with the Lord, mm-hmm. because we can be believers, but not have a real relationship yeah. with him. If you have a relationship with, with the Lord, he will yoke you up. Yeah. That's and true. yank your chain <laughs> and get you get you together if you have a relationship with That's him. That's right. I, I love that. And I always say, God keeps me on a short leash. Yeah. I can't really go that far mm-hmm. where I get checked real hard. I just mm-hmm. get checked. And, you know, I love that story because I remember that moment. Yeah. We had gone through a season we were doing auditions. Uh-huh. And you came, and we were blown away. That was, yeah. Because I was like, you don't get singers like this all the time. You don't. If you get one in your lifetime in your mm-hmm. church, you're happy. Really. And you could sing every part, no matter what we threw at you. Yeah. You could sing it all. Like your ear was just so trained and developed, and you, you just had this beauty and stage presence. And I'm like, we have hit the jackpot with LaRue. This is like, <laughs> come on, Jesus, thank you. And I was so, because I wasn't the kind of, back then in even now, I was like, I don't really care who leads. I just want to be a part of something great. Right. You know, yeah. I really did. And so, you know, plus it's a lot of pressure. You need people to come around and help. And then you were there, and then you were gone. And, and I was I like, was gone. What happened? Where did she go? And then we just kept moving on and moving on. And then the pastor was like, where is that girl that could sing all those parts? I said, that's a great question. And he said, well, you should have reached out to her. I said, I should have. What happened? And then that literally that same day, there she was. There you were. And I didn't even really care. I was like, I don't don't care if you're mad at me. Get up here. We need you. And it really didn't even impact me at all because I Mm -hmm. thought, let's move on. Let's let's get to where we need to be. And then I also know that the enemy plays tricks on us. Absolutely. And we've talked about that on this podcast before about that limiting belief system. Mm. And that's what hits a lot of creatives. And even though we're equipped and we've got what it takes to do so much more, many times it's our own limiting belief. Sometimes we initially maybe turn it on someone else and say, they are limiting me. Mm. I could do that better. But really deep down, it's this insecurity. It's coming from an insecure absolutely, place. Absolutely, absolutely, 100%. That, that place of insecurity. Yeah. And man, even, even the people, you would be surprised at how many people that are 
out in the front, yes, in singing in front of millions and millions of people who still b- battle with insecurities. Oh, the greatest it's a of the very on the real yes. situation. The greatest celebrities of today. Yeah, but they, you know what? Yeah. I, I I think that that though is an opportunity for even though you 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 feel like you're not adequate or you can't do you're not you know you 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 can't handle the or you're not worthy of doing it it's a good thing to have a paradigm shift in the mindset of that same thought process of you know what I'm not good enough yeah I can't do it but that's right Jesus Christ can do it through me that's right you know I can do all things through Christ and that's where that scripture comes in you know you know I've seen the, the saying that says you you are enough you are enough. Yeah. I don't want to be enough. I am not enough. I don't want to be enough in That's my right. own right. That's right. You know, I, I still want to have that little bit of limitation just yeah. for myself so yeah. that way I can put it, put the, put the, the rest of it on Jesus. It, it's so true. I think even as we get older and we spend more time with the Lord, we realize that we do have to get out of the way. Yeah. And I want you to kind of tell, I'd love to hear your take on this because, you know, my husband and I are pastoring now. And we have some amazing people in our church. Mm-hmm. And through the years, I've noticed that there are people that really have a hard time with any type of correction. Mm-hmm. And I know I wouldn't be where I'm at today had I not had received hard correction. Now, nobody was mean and evil, mm-hmm. but it was, it, it bit, it hit. Yeah. You know, it was hard to hear um, throughout my life. But had I allowed that, what looked like, like criticism or correction, mm-hmm to impact me in a negative way, there's no way I'd be here right now. I had to kind of spit out the part I didn't like and just receive the part that was true. Absolutely. And I know you've been leading, you said we've both been 20 years in yeah. this. I can't believe it, yeah. but it's true. H- how has that, have you seen how that's impacted people yeah. that you've led yeah. that, w- that couldn't receive correction? Yeah, absolutely. I remember um, when I was leading the choir uh, that there were, <laughs> I would have, I would have my singers, well, we would all run around the sanctuary. And so if you were late, you had to do double laps. And so <laughs> that's we're doing that. We're doing. Guys, <laughs> we're doing it. Hell no. And so, but I remember a young lady, you know, bringing, saying to me, you know, I don't like having to run when I'm late, but I appreciate the discipline because it makes me better. It makes yeah. me stronger. And there's a scripture that says no one likes the discipline in the moment, yeah. but it makes us better. It yeah. makes you stronger. And so, you know, when, again, it's just about the mindset, you know, yeah. how you, how are you receiving that? How are you looking at that discipline? Um, it, it's, it's all for the betterment of the, of the people. It's all for our, yeah. our good. Yeah. You know, it makes it stronger. It does make it stronger. And when you encounter someone, how, because some, this is my therapy session with my, <laughs> my sister, because, you know, that's yeah. the hardest thing for me because I try to make things happy and yeah. say it sweetly. Sure, yeah. And, you know, but there, we just live in an era where the hypersensitivity of yeah. any, any correction that you bring, even if you do it lovingly, mm-hmm. it's amazing how fast people will just bail. Yeah. They'll just, they can't handle it. And, you know, is that something that you could speak to, for, to yeah. people that maybe might, because you, you kind of had a situation in your own life where mm-hmm. you are saying, as soon as I realized, you know, I could do this better. And, you know, I'm, now I'm put in a position where I'm better than everybody on this stage, mm-hmm. but yet I'm taking a, a lower position. Right. You know, how important is it for your future to be somebody that just resist the temptation to run, yeah. but to stay in the fire, even what, if it's correction. Yeah, what does that word say? The pride pride comes before the fall. Yeah. You know, uh, all of that. If you are seeing yourself being, uh, re- being criticized or being corrected and you notice that you're bucking, you're mm-hmm. bucking the, the, the authority that's been placed in your life, check your pride. Yeah. Check that, you know. And I'm not saying like to just, you know, think about it. No, ask God. Yeah. Is that a spirit of pride that's rising up in me? Mm-hmm. Again, like I said, you can be a, be- you can be a believer and, and, and have asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, but do you have a relationship with him? Relationship means that you are communicating with him. It's a dialogue. You're not just praying and asking him for stuff, but you're positioning yourself in a way where you can hear from him, you can receive from him. If you have been corrected or you've been disciplined and you've got some, you know, some kickback against it, 
ask the Lord, God, is this a spirit of pride? Because you don't want that. You don't want that pride because pride comes before a fall. And we've got to stay humble. Yeah. You know, we don't see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. We don't see a lot of humility um, on social media and just in in general. Yeah. We don't see a lot of that. But that's what God is calling us to live a life that's that's humble. Yeah. And it's it's contrite the contrite heart. Yeah. That's what I think grieves me the most is that I'm not seeing that as much as I would like. This the the contrition mm-hmm. because that's what leads to repentance. Absolutely. It's like, you know, and that's what you really personify with that story. That's who you are. You bring this truth to that moment of mm-hmm. transparency to say, I got in my feelings. Yeah. I felt like, you know, here I come from this history of you know, of, of education and I know how to do it. And here's this, you know, girl up there that's clueless. And I was, and I could totally, you know, sing circles around her. And I can imagine how that had to feel. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, that's kind of how I I started because I was a part of the worship team. And before you ever were there, I was there at the same kind of scenario. I had to walk through that stage. Like the person that was in charge, I was better than them. I mean, I know that sounds really I hear you braggy, know, but, I but it was just true. Like yeah. I could out sing you. I could do this. I could, but that's what I had to get rid of. That's what God said until you stop making it about your career and you make it more about your calling. And when in your calling, you're going to walk through a process of dying to yourself, walking and, and following God is an invitation to die. Yeah. That's really what Whoa. it is. That, say that. Can you say that again? Walking in a relationship with God is an invitation to dying, dying to yourself, dying to your way of doing things, dying to the things that you feel. Well, I'm so equipped. And why are you putting me under somebody that's not as equipped as me? That doesn't make any sense. But there's seasons for that. David, and, and I've shared this on podcasts mm-hmm. before, but it keeps going back to David. David was 16 years old, they think, when he was brought in in Jesse's house an anointed king, and he went right back to the field. Mm-hmm. He didn't go from the, the, from there t- to the anointing moment to the to palace. the to the palace. Right. He went back to the to the shepherd's field and just went on about his his day. And because there was a, still a process he had to walk yeah. through, and I think that's what we have to remember. As and you were walking through a process. Mm-hmm. I walked through the same process. Yeah. You know, at where I was, I was like, okay, this is crazy. I should be in charge, and I had people around me saying the same thing. Yes. Yeah. I had yeah. people, I don't know what, you need to go tell him that right. you would be a great leader. You know? yeah. And the Holy Spirit checked me really hard and said, if it's built in the flesh, you're going to have to maintain it in the mm. flesh. So if you'll wait on me, I will appoint you. And then you can go, you told me to do it. So if I mess up, I can blame it on the pastor and go, well, you put me here. Yeah. I didn't ask for this. And the reality is it was the best way to be. Just stay in a place of, of servanthood and humility. And God, can I tell you today, for, for two people that have known each other for over 20 years, and we've seen the good, bad, and the ugly, we've walked through things, uh, and, and we've seen the fruit of, of our own lives and others' lives and decisions they made. Can I tell you, what God has for you is for you. There's no man, there's no woman, there's no situation, there's no scenario, there's no past, there's nothing that's going to keep God from positioning you right where he wants you to be at the right time. What God has for you is for you. Nobody can take it from you. Nobody, it may look like they can, right. but they can't. And so if you'll just, I'm just, I know it sounds a little cliche because we live in a world where people go, but I want to do the work and see the reward. I want to do the work. Sometimes you do the work and you do the work and you do the work and then you see a little bit and then you, then you get pushed back a little bit and you keep doing the work. It's upside down in the kingdom. Right. It, it's, you have, you have to keep sowing that seed. It's seed, seed time and harvest. But I just feel like somebody needs to be encouraged today that you're about ready to say, I'm I'm, shoot, this is stupid. I, I've been overlooked for the last time. Mm -hmm. You know, I was prepared to sing that solo Mm -hmm. for the last six weeks and I ain't get to sing it. If you make it about you now, you're going to miss out on what God has. You're going to miss out. And, and we're, you know, we're going to be talking about a lot of things because LaRue is an expert in a lot of areas and, um, I don't, I'm not an expert. She's educated. I just figured, I learned from her. Okay, so I sound, I sound smart, but she's the educated one here. Um, but we, we love to talk about spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. It all flows together. Right. It's all connected. So yeah. we want to minister to you and spiritually yeah. and help you go from where you are to the next level. But we also are going to do a podcast next week, and you got to stay around for this. Make sure that you set the notification so that it'll come, and you don't miss this one, because we're going to be talking about health and wellness. Yeah. 
And because we are spirit, soul, and body, and it's all connected, and she is excellent on vocal health. So if you know somebody that's a preacher, singer, speaker, teacher, anybody that uses their voice, you want to be a part of and watch this or listen to this podcast that we're going to be doing next because this is part two, and it's going to really make a big difference. You want to give it like a little teaser of what we're going to talk about? Well, you know, it's like you said, we're spirit, soul, we are talking about spirit, soul, and body. I heard a quote that said, um, we are just as divine as we are domestic. Wow. And we weigh so heavy in the church on the divine part, the spirit, that we don't pay attention to the domestic part. We can't fulfill the calling if we're dead. That's (laughs) true. So we've got to be able to maintain our health, maintain our wellness, so we can fulfill the assignment and the call that God has on our life. That's it. And so you guys need to tune in next week. And I hope you enjoyed this podcast because I know we shared some good stuff and I know it's going to encourage you. Share this this podcast with somebody. Grab the link, copy it, send it to somebody so that they can be watching watching this. Somebody that you know needs to be encouraged. Maybe somebody that's right in the middle of a season where they're ready to quit and they feel like they've waited for so long and they're not going to see the blessing. We are two people to tell you if you hold on, keep a good attitude, you're going to see the reward. So thank you, LaRue, for being my guest. I love you. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next week. Next week.